this little guy is Rico, and this is uh, Lola, right? And uh, they don't have this potty problem. But uh, our other dog, Clara, who is over there chewing on a bully stick right now, uh, has had some accidents in the house. Now, she seems to me to be a very sensitive dog. Now, I want to talk, this is going to be a, basically a video about potty training and remedial potty training. For, I'm going to start off by talking about things you don't want to do. One of the oldest wives' tales is to rub the dog's nose in it. It's been clinically proven over and over again that that will teach the dog to go elsewhere and not pee in front of you, but to go and hide instead of letting you know to go do it elsewhere. And it's for hundreds of years, that's how people have, you rub their nose in it, and the dogs look like they're upset. They are upset because we're rubbing their nose in urine, uh, but it will not help them with potty training, but it'll actually make it worse. Another common mistake people do is the dog has an accent and we catch them in the act, we're like, don't do that, bad dog, bad dog, bad dog. What the dog hears is the human gets mad when I potty. But guess what, human? I have to potty like six times a day. So you're unreasonable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and hide. And I have been paid by many, many clients whose dogs will not urinate in front of them because of that. And what we mean to say is don't potty in the house or on the couch, but what the dog hears is don't potty. So when it comes to potty training, positive reinforcement, every study shows is the best way to do it. Now there's also a difference between having an accident and having, uh, and marking. Some females and a lot of males will mark things to claim them or to assert themselves. I don't think that's the case from what I saw from her. I could be wrong because I have not seen it in the act, but she seems a little, Clara seems to be a little bit sensitive and maybe a little bit, uh, I don't say insecure, but kind of in that family. So I think this is really more of a, either losing control of her bowels because she's scared or just not understanding and not thinking what she's doing is wrong. So one of the things we're, we're gonna do is take away the furniture because she's peed on the bed and she's peed on the couch. And so it's by simply eliminating her access to that it will help tremendously. Now I asked earlier what the word was to potty and we kind of had a couple of words, uh, a couple of expressions thrown out. Dogs key on the first sound that they hear. If I say go potty, the dog is keying on go, not on potty. And a lot of times we say go potty, go make a potty, go hurry up and potty. We're saying a lot of different variables and it's making it harder for the dog. Sometimes if we have a word that we've used in a lot of different contexts, it's easier to throw that word away and come up with a completely new word. The word I use for my dog is uh, quest is, is uh, business. Now the way that I train a potty train a dog or do remedial potty training is I wanna just make sure I'm rewarding the heck out of him for doing the thing that we want him to do. So if the dog, when I take the dog out to an area that it has the ability to potty in, I take it out and I give it five minutes when it's what I call loaded. We talked about this mm -hmm. off camera. So if the dog is loaded and I take it to the area, if it doesn't go in five minutes, especially as a puppy, I'm distracted. I'm not remembering it, so I'm just gonna, I, it's not important enough for me to do it. Now I'm sniffing and doing other things. So I take it back inside. I either carry it in my lap, I hold it on a leash, or I tie the leash to my belt, and the dog goes with me everywhere. I put it in a kennel if it's kennel trained, and it, it's a positive place for the dog. After 15 to 30 minutes, I take the dog back out to the potty area, and then I let the dog give another five minutes to go. If it doesn't go, I bring it back inside and repeat this process until it eliminates. Now, when it eliminates, dogs learn through association, repetition, and timing. So as soon as it starts to pee, a lot of us, we go out saying, go make a potty, go potty. Well, the dog doesn't know what the word potty is. Saying it a hundred times isn't gonna help, and that's exactly how 90% of people train, potty train their dog. So if, I, if you don't speak Spanish, and I say, tiene sed, tiene sed, tiene sed, you don't know what I'm saying. But if, you speak, if I say Tiana said, and you're like, oh, he's asking about drinking. So basically when I go outside, we're gonna wait for the dog to potty on its own. So I don't tell it to go out the way, I'm not using the word, I just wait. As soon as the dog starts to pee or poop, I say business one time. Now, we wanna say it in a calm tone of voice. A lot of times if our dog's been having accidents in the house, it goes, business! And you see the response <laughs> that you get. You will stop the dog from evacuating its bladder, and then it will come inside and promptly have another That's accident. right. That's so you want to say business in a tone, calm tone of voice. Now, as soon as it gets done, I crouch down like a, like a catcher in baseball. I have a high-value treat. As soon as the dog gets done, I pop it in the treat in its mouth, and I say business. Make sure that it's, taken, it's touched its lips or it's taken its first bite before you say the word. You want to say the word slightly afterwards. This way it's pleasure receptors are being activated and it relates the word business with something good and positive. Um, now, sometimes you can jumpstart this. Um, what I do is I actually teach my dog to potty in a specific place. And to accomplish that, what I do is I walk the dog there on a leash. 
and I give it the five foot perimeter around the leash and it can potty anywhere and I give it a treat the same way I just described to you. After doing that for a week, then I go out there with the dog off the leash, sorry buddy, and uh, I go to the same spot. If the dog goes in that five foot area, I give it five treats. Business, business, business. We want the dog going, what did I just do? I got the mother load of treats. I gotta remember what I did so I can get those again sometime. If it goes a little bit closer to the house, I might just give it one treat or two treats. You know, you wanna make it basically, there's a reward for going outside anywhere and there's no reward for going inside. So eventually the dog will start to want to hold it so that it ha can go outside and get that reward. Now when you're doing this, it's really important that everybody, anytime that the dog is going outside, we have somebody watch the dog. We don't want the dog to, have it, uh, to go potty and not get that reward for about a two week period. You really wanna focus this on about a week, usually is enough, but a two week period is what you wanna kind of set your expectations on. So if you get to the point where you're doing that and somebody's escorting the dog and watching the dog pot at potty, every time the dog's like, these guys are perps, they're all about me potty. But that's exactly <laughs> what we want is to supervise so we can say the word and deliver the positive reinforcement. Like I said, if you have a dog that has had a negative association, it's much better to call it Trump or whatever the word is that you want to use for potty and make it a brand new word. Now the three times that a dog is most likely to want to uh, uh, need to go potty, right after waking up, five minutes after eating, and 15 minutes after the start of heavy playtime. So the dogs are running around playing, look at your watch. After about 12 minutes, maybe take Clara outside and have the treat with you, and as soon as she starts doing her business, you say the word business, and then she does her, uh, her thing, and then you give her a treat afterwards. Now, some of our, my clients like to teach their dog to uh, ring a bell, and we'll go a little bit of a bonus round in this video. So if you want to tra train your dog to ring a bell, we don't really have as much of an importance for that. Hello, Clara. Uh, in this house, because we have such a beautiful doorway open here that's open and she can go in and out herself. But if we do, or we're gonna have the dog sequestered behind a closed door. The way you do this is you hang a bell next to the door. The common mistake most people do is hang it from the door. That means that dogs don't do association. So every time the door opens, I hear the bell ring. So the bell ring, ringing means go outside. It has nothing to do with potty. So whenever I do this, I always train the dog first to potty with a command. Once the dog, and I say the word business, and the dog kind of bounces up, then I know that yes, the dog has to go and it recognizes the word. So keep on practicing until that's the case. Hello, Clara. There we go. Sweetheart, good job. Come. All right, so um, once, once the dog recognizes the command word, then what we do is we go outside with the same bell. So we have a bell hanging from inside, we have like, so we order two of them. Have it clamped so it's not making any sounds. As soon as the dog starts peeing and pooping, I gently start ringing the bell. Don't do it too hard, just the same way it would make the sound at the door. And then as soon as she stops, I clamp it so it's not making a sound. I have the dog come over. As soon as the dog comes over, I pop it in her mouth and I start jingling the bell while she's ringing, while she's chewing it. This associates the jingling with the act with the reward. Then what I do is I, after I've done this for about a week, I take the dog over to where the, uh, where the bell is. And what my sister did is she just took the paw, dog's paw and she rang the bell and then would let the dog go through the doorway. What I do is I take a toothpick and I go to a thing of peanut butter. I dip one end in it and I get a big little gob about the size of a pea. Then I dip the other end in and just get a tiny little bit. What I do is I go to where the uh, doorbell is first. And first I let the dog lick on the, chew on it or I lick on the, uh, the, the pea size, and I get them a little bit closer, a little bit closer to the bell. And then when they're about to be done, I ring the bell and then open the door immediately. Now, after I've done that a while, then I can actually just take the pin size and just tap a little tiny bit of peanut butter on there. Don't put too much, if you put too much, it'll sit there making out with the bell. So just put a little bit so they get a little lick, and as soon as that doorbell rings, or the bell rings, you open the door and take them outside. And again, bring the bell with you and shake it when they're doing potty. So, um, those are some do's and don'ts for not uh, to do and not to do, <laughs> uh, pun intended, for potty training. Um, and remember, positive reinforcement. So if your dog has an accident, if you, wanna, if you feel like you need to punish the dog or there's some punishment that needs to be doled out, if you want, you can grab like a stick and then really hard, you wanna hit yourself because you put your dog in position <laughs> to have an accident. It's your fault, not the dog's fault. Now in the meantime, if we have to worry about Clara having accidents, we might wanna think about closing off parts of the house temporarily. Some people, you know, and if she's, if she's loaded, 
Uh, there's a playpen you can get with about 40 inch tall uh, partitions. You can put it in any shape. We might set it up right here. So if you're loaded and I can't watch you because I have to shower, I might put you in there. Now when you do this, one little tip for the baby gate, don't pick the dog up and carry it over the gate. You're teaching the dog to climb to get out of it. Make sure they use the door to go, order a gate with the door, make sure they go in and out through the door. So this is a long video on remedial and basic <laughs> potty training.